Hey guys, welcome back to Retro Peace Theater. So this is chapter 3 of our playthrough of King's Quest 7. If you remember, uh, the queen uh, at the end of chapter 1 came in here and was accosted by the uh, salamander lizard creature. But if we give him the prickly pear that we picked up in the desert, uh, he lets us through. So this is chapter 3, the sky is falling. Um, I apologize, I started the capture after it showed the chapter thing. Um, this is a very pretty little world. Um, I'm going to try to kind of play through it quickly, but there is a fair amount of dialogue going on um, to set the stage. I advise you to turn back, my lady. These once magical woods have been cursed, and no one is safe here. I am Valenys of Daventry, Noble Stag, and I appreciate your concern, but I am on a mission from which I cannot be dissuaded. I must enter your woods. You are brave, but know this. The oak tree you see before you was once my wife Ceres, she who is Mother Nature. I could not prevent her from being turned into a tree, for I had already been turned into a stag. I, Attis, Lord of the Hunt, could not save her. Who has done such a terrible thing, my Lord Attis? The attack was so sudden and so ferocious that I saw nothing. Only a noble from the high court of Etheria could have so much power. But that is unthinkable. I am sorry for your loss, Attis, but I must search on. Farewell, my friend. Valenice, wait. Be warned. To the far west is the wood of the Weir Folk. Do not enter those woods, for the Weir Folk are never friendly and always hungry. Thank you, Lord Attis. May the fate smile upon both of us. Whoever voiced him did such a wonderful job. What wicked creature drove this stake into the tree, into Lady Ceres? The same creature who turned her into a tree. If I only knew who that was, Lady Valenis, I would surely make him regret it. I fear my lady may die of that wound, but I can do nothing about it with these clumsy hooves. Lady Ceres, I will help you if I can. Hmm. With your permission, my lord, I would like to try to remove this stake. Do not feel bad, Valenice. That stake was placed there by the darkest of evil magic. I'm not sure anyone can remove it. I hate to ask you this, Lord Addis, but what will happen if Ceres, Mother Nature herself, does indeed perish? I cannot say for certain, but I feel in my bones that the woods will perish along with her. It's one of the most tragic conversations that we've had. I mean, certainly um, the lost adventurer in the desert that we helped. Um, certainly, you know, his was a tragic story, but he died, you know, just because he was lost in the desert. Um, but to be cursed so wickedly, um, the voice actor um, really did a great job portraying that scene. 
took me the longest time to figure this portion out. And I mean, I know the wand, you know, sparkles over things you can interact with, but I didn't know for the longest oh, time I had to jump my. here. Hush, my jewel. Soon all your troubles will be over. <laughs> So we have to save the bird, and to do so we use the box that we got that had the corn kernel in it, and we trap the spider. Hey! Put hook the sun! Put hook my lunch! Where am I? Just cool off for a while, my many-legged friend. No fair! <laughs> Sounds like you threw him in the water, but I think you were supposed to throw him in the brush. But now we can free our little bird friend here. There you are, pretty one. Safe and sound. I owe you my life, lady. I know I am very tiny, but if I can do you a good turn in the future, I will. Farewell! This level has some of my favorite characters and jokes that are in it, in the whole game. of Daventry! I seek entry to your town! You may only enter this city uh, if you uh, bring me the holy one-ton tomato of Antioch. <laughs> That's ridiculous! There's no such thing! Uh. Oh, and you were gonna let a little thing like that stop you? You don't deserve to be in this town. That, of course, is a reference to the holy hand grenade of Antioch from Monty Stop. Python and the Don't Holy Grail. Don't touch that door! You can't go through there. there there's, a, there's a giant rabid chicken on the other <laughs> side. That's it. A giant rabid chicken. I'll take my chances. Stop! You can't do that! I just did, little fellow. Oh! The Archduke will hear of this! The poodle yep. is the Archduke. Stop! I, Archduke Fifila Yip Yip, do order it. You are a stranger here and you have no business in the town of Faldero. <laughs> Uh, if we show him, I'm just going to skip through kind of the dialogue and just show him the comb to get to where we need to go. <laughs> Good sir, I want nothing from your town. I'm only searching for my lost daughter, Rosella. She was stolen by some form of dark magic and now I fear I will never see her again. The saddest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Enjoy your stay in Folder, early lady. Be sure to take the faux shop with a grain of salt. I hope you found your daughter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, 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 the sky is falling! The sky is falling! Just never mind her, my lady. He's very silly. Let's not go to Camelot. Tis a silly place. Um, we're gonna read the Town sign on the door here. Closed. Come back a little later for the Archduke's birthday party and masquerade ball. Now that sounds like fun. So one thing I really appreciate about this game is it uses a style of writing um, known as Chekhov's gun. Real quick, this is hilarious. It's a bull in a china shop. Welcome to my shop, dear lady. I am Fernando Bullforth, proprietor. Good day, sir. Oh, it is not a good day. It is a terrible day. A black day. 
I'm sorry to hear that, Fernando. Is there anything I can do to help? Not unless you have found my treasure. Someone stole your treasure? How awful! Was it gold or gems? No, it was treasure, my precious china bird. I love my treasure more than all the stars in the sky. She is my only friend, and now... Now she's gone. <laughs> so he's lost his prize uh, treasure, treasure, which is a bird that goes in this cage. Take a look at that. Pardon me, good sir, but what is the price of that lovely mask? The price is one hundred pieces of gold, my lady, but I'll let you have it for eighty. I just don't care anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately, I've no money. Thank you anyway, shopkeep. So, <laughs> Anton Chekhov um, was a Russian uh, playwright and Sky author. Falling! Run, 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 run. The sky is falling! Wait for it. Hang on. I'll explain everything here in a sec. What I'm getting at. I had no choice but to hear you, my lady. What makes you think the sky is falling? I know the sky is falling because we've been cursed by an evil fairy! The whole thing's gonna land on our heads any minute! Okay. So anyway, Anton Chekhov had a theory and a belief in writing that every element should be necessary. Um, and he's quoted different ways in his writings, but one of the things that he says is, um, you know, if you have a gun hanging on the wall in chapter one, in chapter two or three, the gun should go off. Um, if the gun isn't going to go off, it doesn't need to be mentioned in the story. And it's just this idea that everything is important. Then maybe you would prefer some of Professor Gluten's all-purpose extra sticky glue to put it back. For some reason, he reminds me of Bob Hope. Ah! Why doesn't anyone listen to me? Why? 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 I'll tell you why, my dear. It's because you don't get their attention. However, if you were to smack them in the head with this fine shillelagh... <laughs> Um, so, yeah, all of the elements in your story should be important. If they're not, they don't belong. And the King's Quest games are really good about everything that is interactable being important uh, to the story. There's no excess, there's no dead what ends. A sweet little bird. This Hello, is hilarious. Dragon. Hello, Dragon Brett. How can you be so rude? I'm a mockingbird, lady. What do you expect? Quick, go soak your head. Your brain is overheating. Every time we talk to him, he insults us. You smell like a pair of armored trousers after the Hundred Years' War. <laughs> Cover your face. You're scaring the horses. When you were born, the midwife slapped your mother. You must have fallen out of the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down. When you were a kid, your mother had a tire leg of mutton around your neck to get the dog to play with you. Whoa! Either the plague wagon just drove up, or you really need a bath. Your parents tried to throw you to the wolves, but the wolves threw you back. <laughs> a lot of those are classic uh, insults I've heard. I grew up hearing some of them because this game was popular when I was a kid, and others because some of them are just old, old jokes. Oh, look at what we have here. Hello, little bird. Who are you? Go away! 
Hush, little one. Your friend Fernando is looking for you. He says he loves his little treasure more than all the stars in the sky. You've met him? Will you take me to him, please? Of course. Here, hop on my finger. Okay, now we have treasure. Who's this little china bird? And we're going to talk to our salesman here. Good day, sir. I wonder if you might be able to help me. Of course I can help you, madam. What you need is a big jar of effervescent, a quick-acting dewberries revelant. It will cure what ails you and cleans your cookware as well. <laughs> I am not ill, sir. And furthermore, I find your claim hard to believe. You do? Well, with Dr. Bullroarer's gullibility tonic, you'll believe anything. It's made with so much pure hooey that it won't just suspend your disbelief, it'll make it hover in midair. <laughs> Never mind, merchant. I'll seek help. I've actually known way. salesmen like this in my life. Oh. A moment. Oh. Oh. I need to show him the comb. The comb is kind of the key to a lot of things to get any answers. Please, sir. You must help me. This comb belongs to my daughter, and she's missing. She's a beautiful girl with sky blue eyes and golden hair. Have you heard of her? Indeed I have, lady. I have just recently heard that she is to be married to the Troll King in the Volcanics Underground in a few days. Too bad you can't possibly go there and save her. What do you mean I can't go there? I can, and I will! But my lady, the Volcanics Underground lies west of the forest, beyond the wood of the Weir Folk. No one has ever entered that wood and lived. Not unless they had my special salve, that is. I will sell it to you but I will take only one very special item for it. A magic statuette. A lovely depiction of an imp gazing into a pond. Just where can I find this magic statuette? I cannot be sure. But last I heard, the Archduke had it. I can't just take something from the Archduke. It is not really his. The statue is a relic of the realm. Some say it once belonged to Titania, queen of the fairies, when she was just a child. No one knows to whom it really belongs. Well, all right. I must have that salve if I'm ever to see my daughter again. All right. So, we need... To go deliver treasure back to our friend, the bull in the china shop. <laughs> I know someone who'd really like to see you, Fernando. Who might that be, my lady? <gasps> Treasure! I cannot thank you enough, good lady. Here, allow me to present you with this. It is my newest acquisition, and I want you to have it. Thank you, Fernando. I will always remember you and Treasure. If you will excuse me, my lady, I must go spend some quality time with Treasure. Yes, tell me all about it, my little precious one. Okay. And so now we have the mask, and with the mask we can get into the masquerade party. 
Good evening, sir and madam. Do come right in. You're the only non-animal here, so everybody, uh, as a human, they don't let you do much. Welcome, my lady. Or rather, you're the only human non-animal here. Say that correctly. So we're going to go to this tapestry on the back wall. Looks like a great party, but we're, uh, we're going to bypass it. Okay. So now we have kind of this MC Escher style room. Let's see. I'm trying to remember the. I believe I go this way first. There's two rooms I have to get to, and I have to get there in a certain uh, order. Um, I think I go down. I need to get to this one first. There it is. Yep. So the whole room's upside down, and if we open the drawer, oh, that falls out and we can't get it. We can't reach it, but that's okay. Uh, we are still going to find a way to get it. And that's where we have to go to this room. So we're going to go up. And go this way. We're back here, and if we go down, perfect. Yeah, first time you just walk right into it, and the second time it lets you in for whatever reason. Uh, we've got all these different mirrors, and each one will show us a different version of ourself, like a funhouse. Uh, but the one we actually want is this one here. Okay. And now we're in the right... the room is righted up. And now... Since we have opened that, we can get it to come down off the ceiling, and now we have access to it. And we had to do it that way because this is technically the bottom of the drawer as it is in the room. Uh, the drawer is then upside down. Okay. And now we're back here. Now we can leave. That was really all we needed to do in here. That's really all you can do in here. But that got us the statuette that our uh, friend was looking for. Put our mask back on. And we're going to leave the party. And we see our friend is gone. And Chicken Little's still losing her mind. Ah! 
and looks like a piece of cheese has fallen out of the sky and our friend has flown off and in his nest I can't reach that by the way not right now in his nest looks like something we can get now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here this is the faux shop and if we walk in oh no it's just a fake shop right but in passing very quickly at the very beginning when we arrived in this town we were told to take the faux shop with a grain of salt by the Archduke. So if we eat the salt... <coughs> Ugh, that is salty. And go in. Suddenly there's a shop. Look at that. Oh, hello, madam. Let me know if I can help you with anything. Um... All right, so we have our wooden coin that we got out of the uh I found this the wooden nest. nickel, sir. What could I purchase with it? Why, you can buy this wonderful book, The Wit and Wisdom of Falderall. Here you are, madam. Thank you. So this is hilarious. This book, The Wit and Wisdom of Falderall, if we click on it, it's empty. <laughs> it's a blank book. And we need the book, and now we're going to go see an old friend. We have to do a little bit of backtracking. So, and nothing's going to happen while we do this until we get there. We're going to go see our old friend with the rare curiosities back in the desert. Uh, so in the meantime, um, just to kind of let you guys in. I have a couple different playthroughs that are happening right now. I've got my Ocarina of Time playthrough, and uh, I have um, in my Sudeki playthrough. Eh, sorry, I had a brain fart moment. Uh, my Sudeki playthrough. Um, I had a Pokemon Blue playthrough that I had started, but I lost the recording data um, from the capture session, and it happens. I swear it happens every time I play a Pokemon game. For some reason, those are just cursed for me. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna. Maybe I'll try again. Um, but I've got you know a lot of things, a lot of different playthroughs that are happening. The Ocarina of Time one is almost done. I did take a little bit of a break from it, um, just because I had some things going on. But uh, I will finish that playthrough. I promise. Um, and I appreciate you. And if you could share my channel, um, I've only got a handful of subscribers right now. And I do this. I do this because I love it. I do it because I enjoy it. And I do it because it's fun. Um, and I get to play games and you know give commentary. Um, and it it really is an enjoyable thing for me to do. So if you know anybody who would like my channel, it's always family friendly. It's always appropriate. Um, with the Sudeki playthrough, there is a mature warning at the beginning of the game, and I kind of explain why. Um, nothing too serious, you know, nothing X-rated or anything like that. Um, it has a little bit of language and some scantily clad female characters in it. But otherwise, I try to make sure that my channel always stays appropriate and family-friendly. So... We're going to see our friend here in the Rare Curiosity Shop. Would you like to trade with me? You won't believe what you will see. If I show him this. Gorgeous work of art. Let me get my lizard heart. <laughs> I think I'll keep the statue. Thanks anyway. But we want to give him the book. Aha! You offer me a book. I'll get my finest shepherd's crook. Now that sounds like a good trade. And just because I'm curious what he has to say about the uh, mask. Would you like to trade with me? You won't believe what you will see. Oh, what a lovely china mask. Would you trade for an old and rusted flask? Ah, uh, I think not. 
I've never tried to give him an object back before. You want to give me back my crook? Sorry, but I chewed the book. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now we're going to go back. And uh, we're going to fish out the piece of cheese that fell out of the sky. And then that'll actually end this episode. <sighs> and while I'm here, I'm going to grab the jackalope fur. Um, for those of you who uh, may have remembered, in the first episode, I did grab that. Um, I had to come back to Chapter 3 because I didn't save. Um in the right spot and so I had to kind of do some stuff over and so um, this is actually like my second playthrough uh, up to this point uh, because I didn't save so I had to go back and replay to get to where I needed to go so now we're back to the same place I would have been had I not lost my save status <laughs> halt! You can't go through that door. There are, um, 600 bad-tempered weasels with crossbows right on the other side. Yeah, that's it. Weasels. <laughs> well, thank you for the warning, little fellow. Oh, big, fat, hairy rats. All right. Under arrest for all of the reasons my lord the Archduke Yip Yap stated. Plus the heinous and disgusting crime of having no fur or feathers to cover your bald face. Let's lock her up till we can figure out what to do with her. <laughs> Be there. This whole thing is like a giant Monty Python sketch. And that ends that chapter. So, next chapter, will the real Troll King please stand up? Um... Thanks, guys. I'll see you then, and uh, it'll be a good time.